Good morning, class. So, our topic for today is all about the playing format in volleyball. So, before we start our discussion, I would like you to read our objectives for this lesson. So, objectives. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to understand the playing format in volleyball, identify the score point to win set, to win a set and a match of a volleyball, and perform a volleyball in the court and demonstrate the parts of playing format in volleyball. So, let's proceed to our discussion. To score a point. So, point or points. A team scores a point by successfully landing the ball on the opponent's court when the opponent team commits a fault. When the opponent team receives a penalty. So, this time, the point, uh, you will successfully, uh, your team will successfully given a score point if the ball is on the opponent's court and it, the opponent's team commits a fault and then the opponent team will receive the penalty. So, that is how we, that is how when we get a score point or uh, the team, uh, the team can get a score point. So next is fault. Can you please read what is fault? Yes. Fault is a team commits a fault by making a playing action contrary to the rules or by violating them in some other way. The referees judge the faults and determine the consequence according to the rules. If two or more faults are committed successively, only the first one is counted. If two or more faults are committed by opponents, team may. Uh, Simultaneously, a double yeah. fault is called and the rally is repeated. Okay, thank you. So, fault. A team commits a fault by making a playing action contrary to the rules or by violating them in some other way. The referees judge the faults and determine the consequence according to the rules. So, if two or more faults are committed successively, only the first one is counted. If two or more faults are committed by opponents simultaneously, Simultaneously, a double fault is called and the rally is repeated. So, called, uh, fault is, uh, um, natin yung fault or, uh, if the, uh, makukuha natin yung fault if the team is, uh, commit or violate, violating some rules in other way. So, the referees or judges will be the one who give faults and determine the consequences. And the rules there is if the two or more faults are committed successf successively, what is counted? And if two or more faults are committed by the opponents simultaneously, uh, double fault, and it called the rally replay. So let's talk about the rally and the completed rally. So rally. In rally, is the sequence of playing actions from the moment of the service hit by the server until the ball is out of Play. So in rally, um, from the moment of the service hit, you will get a rally or uh, by the server until the ball is out of play. So that is rally. That in completed rally is the sequence of playing actions from the moment of the service hit by the server, server until the ball is out of play. So that is completed rally. This includes the award of penalty. Loss of service for service hit made after time limit. Loss uh, if the serving team wins a rally, it scores a point and continues to serve. If the receive, uh, receiving team wins a rally, it scores a point and it must serve next. So, uh, if the server or the team, uh, for example, if you, if your team or you serve and wins the rally, the scores is uh, the score point is in your team and it is continued to serve you will be the one to serve but if the opponent's team will wins the rally the scores the scores point will be the, uh sa, kinal, sa kanila yung score and they will be the one to serve next did you get it class yes ma'am okay good so let's proceed to to win a set so a set except the deciding fifth set is won by the team which first scores 25 points with a minimum lead of 2 points. In the case of uh, 24 minus 24 over 24 tie, play is continued until 2 point lead is achieved. 26 or 24, 27 or 25, etc. So to win a set, some of the, uh, to win a set, 
the first course will be in on 25 points will be the winner. But if if, if in case that uh, the two teams has a tie score, uh, it would it should be played in continue until who can lead or who can get a two points lead achieve or the your team is on 27 and your opponent is 25 then you will your your team is a winner or you are uh, that is the uh, that is the time when we uh, get the who is the winner so next is the to win the match so the match is won by the team that wins three sets in the case of two by two tie the deciding fifth set is played to 15 points with a minimum lead of two points so to win the match so we have here eight three sets to know who would be winner or who could be the winner or who could uh, who would team would be the winner so in case the two by two is tie the deciding fifth set is played to 15 points with a minimum lead of two points and that is the time who to win the match or who teams to win the match let's proceed class so default and incomplete team if a team refuses to play after being summoned to do so it is called declared in default and forfeits the match with the result of 0 to 3 for the match and 0 to 25 for each set a team that without justifiable reason does not appear on the playing court on the time is declared in default with the same result as in rule 6 for 1 Excuse me. A team that is declared incomplete for the rest, for the set or for the match, loses the set or the match. The opponent team is given the points or the points and the sets needed to win the set or the match. The incomplete team keeps its points and sets. So that is the default and incomplete team. If a team refuses to play after being summoned to do so, it declares the default and forfeit the match. So let's proceed. Structure of play. And now we are in, we are now in structure of play. The toss. So before the match, the first referee carries out a toss to decide upon the first service and the sides of the court in the first set. So if a deciding set is to play is to be played, a new toss will be carried out. The toss is taken in the presence of the two team captains. The winner of the toss chooses either the right to serve or to receive the service or the side of the court. The loser takes the remaining choice. So the toss. Sometimes, uh, as what I've observed, when you are in, uh, if you want to play volleyball, some of them is need to toss a coin. Who would be the head or tail, and who will be the one or win? Uh, who will be the head? We will be des decide if where side of the courts they want to start on, and who would be the first to serve. Okay, and the remaining of them and their opponent is the remaining choices. So, or the losers or the opponent takes the remaining choices. So, ne next is the official warm-up session. Prior to the match, if the teams have previously had a playing court ex exclusively at their disposal, they are entitled to a 6 minute after official warm-up period together at the net. If not, they may have 10 minutes. If either captain requests separate consecutive official set or warm-ups at the net, the teams are allowed 3 minutes each or 5 minutes each. In the case of consecutive official warm-ups, the team that has the first service takes the first turn at the net. So, uh, in official warm-up, the team should be have a 6-minute uh, official warm-up period together at the net. If not, they, have may, uh, they will be given 10 minutes. And uh, if either the captain requests separate after warm up at the net, the teams are allowed to give it a three minutes or five minutes each. So next is the let's proceed class. Uh, team starting lineup. So the team starting lineup indicates the rotational order. The players on the court. This order must be maintained throughout the set. Before the start of each set, the coach has to present the starting lineup of his or her team on a lineup at least or lineup sheet or via the electronic device if used. The sheet is submitted duly filled in and signed to the second referee 
uh, or the scorer or electronically sent directly to the e-scorer. The, the players who are not in starting lineup of a set are the substitutes for the set, except the liberos. Once the lineup sheet has been delivered to the second referee or scorer, no change in the lineup may be authorized without a regular substitution. So that is the team starting lineup. Okay, let's continue the team starting lineup. This preferences between players' positions on court and on the line sheet are dealt with as follows. When such a discrepancy is discovered before the start of the set, players' positions must be rectified according to those on the line up sheet. Therefore, there will be no sanction. When before the start of the set, any player on the court is found not to be registered on the lineup sheet of the set, this player must be changed to conform to the lineup sheet and there will be no sanction. However, if the coach wishes to keep such non-recorded players on the court, he or she has to request regular substitution by use of corresponding enhanced signal which will be, what? Will be recorded on the scorer sheet. So, if the discrepancy between players' positions and the line-up sheet is discovered later, the team, as, the team at fault must refer to the correct positions. The opponent points remain valid and in addition, they receive a point and the next service. So, all points scored by the team at fault from the exact moment of the fault up to the discovery of the fault are cancelled. So, where a player is found to be caught but he is... He or she is not registered in the team roster, the opponent's points remain valid, and in addition, they gain a point and service. The team at fault will lose all points and or set 0, 25 if necessary. Gain from the moment of the non-registered player enter the court and will have the submit and revised lineup sheet and set a new registered player into the court in the position of the non-registered player. Did you get it, class? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's proceed. So position. At the moment, the ball is hit by the server. Each team must be positioned within its own court in the rotational order, except the server. The position of the players are numbered as follows. The three players along the net are front row players and occupy positions for front left, three from center, and two front right. The other three are back row players occupying positions 5 back left and 6 back center and I or and 1 rather back right. So that is the position of if you were playing a volleyball. So that's their position. So next is the relative positions between players. Each back row player must be positioned further back from the center line than the corresponding front row player. The front row players and the back row players respectively must be positioned laterally in order indicated in the rules. Okay. So they will be the back row player must be positioned further back the center line. Okay. And the front row players and the back row players were uh, positioned laterally. So let's proceed. The position of players are determined and controlled according to the positions of their feet contacting the ground as follows. Each front row player must have at least a part of his or her foot closer to the center line than the feet of the corresponding back row player. Each right left side player must have at least a part of his or her foot closer to the right or le a right left side line than the feet of the center player in that row. After the service hit, the players may move around and occupy any position on their court and the free zone. So next is the positional fault. So the team commits a positional fault. If any player is not in his or her correct position at the moment the ball is hit by a server, then the player is on court through illegal substitution. Then plays or starts, this is counted as the positional fault with the consequence consequence of an illegal substitution. If the server commits a serving fault at the moment of the service hit, the server's fault is counted before a positional fault. If the service becomes faulty after the service hit, it is the positional fault will be counted. So that is the positional fault. So a positional fault leads to 
following consequence. The team is to sanction with a point and service to the opponent. Player's position must be rectified. So that is the consequence of the positional fault. So we are now in rotation. The rotational order is determined by the team's starting lineup and controlled with the service orders and players positions throughout the set. When the receiving team has gained the right to serve, its players rotate one position uh, clockwise. The players in position to rotate to position one to serve. The player in position one rotates to position six, and etc. It will be counterclockwise. Si may mura sila magpuli-puli. Okay? So, next is the rotational fault. A rotational fault is committed when the service is not made according to the rotational order. It leads to the following consequence. In order, the score stops play by the buzzer. The opponent gains a point and next service. Next is the a rotational fault is determined only after the completion of the rally, which started with a rotational fault. Only a single point is awarded to the opponent regardless at the result of the rally played. So that is the rotational fault when it's committed when the service is not made according to the rotational order. It leads to the following or it leads to a consequence. Next is the rotational order of the faulty team must be rectified. Additionally, the scorer should Determine the exact moment when the fault was committed and all points scored subsequently by the team and fault must be cancelled. The opponent's points remain valid. If that moment cannot be determined, no points or cancellation takes place and the point and service to the opponent is only sanctioned. So, did you get it, class? Did you get it, the rotational fault or how we get a rotational fault? Yes, hmm? Okay, so did you get it? Did you understand the playing format of the volleyball class? Yes, ma'am. No questions, clarifications, suggestions, recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's have a activity. I want you to group into...